Okay, in this lesson, we're going to learn all about location, or in other words, where's the sprite? <laughs> so the, one of the main key factors you need to learn in building any kind of game or app is to find out where exactly on the stage is your sprite, because you want to be able to move them from point A oops, to point B. And knowing where those two spots are will help you guide them to that direction. So before we get into it, let's start by opening up a new project. You do this by going to File, up here in the Tools, and you're going to do New. That's going to open up a new project for you. All right, that sounds great. Now let's begin by create replacing this sprite. So I'm going to go down to his thumbnail. I'm going to right click if you have a mouse. If you are on a laptop then you want to hit the control button which is to the left while you click and that will open up this uh, information. Go down to the delete button and hit delete. Okay now that we've deleted the cat we're going to need a new sprite. So for this practice, we're going to paint a new one. So go up to this menu area right here where it says New Sprite. I'm going to go over to the one that looks like a paintbrush. and It says Paint New Sprite. Click on that, and that's going to open up our paint editor. Now, we didn't discuss this in our first lesson, but we're going to get into it for a little bit for this one. This is going to help us build our game, which we will start building in the next tutorial, which is going to be a maze game. But for now, we're going to need a few things from this paint editor. And the first thing is a new sprite. And that is going to be, for the purposes of this lesson, it's going to be in shape of a ball. So we're going to the left-hand side of the paint editor and scroll till you see the one with the circle. That's the ellipse. Click on that. Bring your cursor over to the paint editor canvas and hold and drag. And as you start to do that, just form a circle. Um, if you have trouble forming a perfect circle, I mean, you can form an ellipse like that or a circle. If you want to do a perfect circle, press the shift key while you're doing that. And as you can see, no matter how big or small you get, it will always be a perfect circle. So that looks like a great size. So I'm going to just release everything there. And let's give it some color. I'm going to take my cursor down below to the palette. I'm going to pick, let's do do some sort of shade of purple. I think that would be great. So I'm clicking on that. It's loading up my palette right here. Now some of you may have worked in paint editors, um, which this is very similar to a lot of the other paint editor software that's out there. But in case you haven't, you pick up the color, it fills the swatch right here, and then simply go back up to your tools again and go to the one that looks like the paint bucket. And it says fill with color. Now all you have to do is click on that. That loads it up. Make sure, if you want to check, go down here to this square that it's this one to the top left, which is a solid. The other ones are gradients, which are really nice effects when you get more advanced. But we're going to just do a solid fill. So it is selected with a blue, and I'm going to go back up, and I'm going to fill my circle. And there you go. Now you have a purple ball. And as you can see over here, into our stage to the left, the ball is on the stage, and we have a new sprite, and it's, and it's a ball. Now let's name this. So it's always good to have it to give your assets or you know your sprites or pictures or everything a name so that you can call upon it later. So I'm, what I'm going to do is click this I in the sprite icon, and that's going to give me all the information about this. Let's let's name it. I'll name it Ball. Not very unique, but at least it'll get the job done. And it shows its position, which is what this today's lesson is going to be all about. And that's about it. Okay, so we're going to click this blue button to go back. Now, how do we know where this ball is? For instance, you have an address, right? So if something needs to get to you, you have a street, uh, maybe a house number, uh, a city name, a state, all that stuff helps to pinpoint exactly where you live. Well, it's sort of like for sprites, too, and anything on this stage. We need to know where it is. Is it here? And what is here? And if it's over here, well, how do I tell it to get over there? And that's where X and Y coordinates come in. 
And it's a pretty um, important concept in any kind of programming. And to know it as soon as you start learning how to program code is really, really important. So we're going to get into that today because you're going to need it for pretty much every tutorial down the road because you want to know where your characters are living at each at any time. So to do that, we're going to go to the stage backdrop thumbnail, which is right here at the lower left. And I'm going to go down to this icon, which is the choose backdrop from library. We'll click on that. There is a specific backdrop that is usually the last one in the category for all. So here we are, category all, and the last one is called an XY grid. And this is going to help me explain this. So click on the XY grid until it's highlighted. And you could double click this and it'll take you back to your stage, or if you could just click it once and go down to this OK button in the lower right side and click it. And as you can see, here comes the X and Y grid. Okay, now this may look like a lot of math and everything crazy going on here, but it's really a basic concept once you really get to know and understand it. And we'll get into that right now. To help me illustrate the point of positioning, I'm going to have us go up to our scripts tag. So we're going to click on this tab up here, scripts. As you can see, that gives us to our scripts area right here. And we just closed out the paint editor. And we are in the Motions palette. We're going to scroll down to the bottom. And I want you to check these two th check boxes at the bottom, one next to X position and one next to Y position. And as you can see, when I did that, look what happens up here. We get a ball. That's the name of our sprite, remember? His X position is 24, and his Y position is negative 42. I don't know why I call him a he, but you know what? He's a character, so <laughs> might as well be a he. Um, when I click on the ball in the stage and I drag it around, I want you to notice how those numbers are changing. These are the address, if you will, the location of the ball. And you need both an X and a Y number to give us the location of the ball. Your X number is your numbers to the right and to the left. Okay? To the right and to the left. You see how the Y doesn't change that much? I'm trying to make it as steady as I can, but it's your X to the, to the le right or to the left that is changing, and your Y coordinate is the up and down numbers. I don't know if you can see that. If I'm trying to keep it real still, but you can see it's really the Y numbers are changing a lot. Okay, that's great. All right, so how is this going to help us? Suppose we always wanted our ball to move to, let's say, this point right here. Sort of over one block and up one block. And if you can see here, its positioning is X, 125, Y, 57. All right, so this is its location. And another place where you can find this location is by looking way over to the right on our script side, and you can see, faded out, but it's X125 and Y57. And just in case you want to find a third place where it has its location, you can open up the information on your sprite, and it'll say X125 and Y57. So if you ever need to find out where exactly your sprite is, there's several ways you can find it, even if you don't want to have these up here permanently or for the meantime. Okay, now having said that, let's drag out a glide one second to XY. And see, because we're here on the 125 and Y57 coordinate, it's already pre-filled out for you. So I'm going to drag that out to my scripts area. And let's say, let's start it back anywhere you want. Let's say way down here. And if you can see up here, it is moved to X minus 175. And the Y position is minus 195. Now, what do you suppose is going to happen? Well, I'm going to click on this button and let's take a look. Boom. It went right to where we told it to go. X 125 and Y57. So no matter where we place this ball and we click this block, it's going to know where to go. 
I'm going to try it again over here. And there it is. And this becomes very, very handy when you start building more intricate games and things like that. So I know this seems like a lot to handle uh, in the very beginning of our lessons together, but it really is a key concept, and we'll keep going over it over and over again in, in future tutorials and everything that we build because it really is something that everyone should learn, be comfortable with X, Y, and coordinates. Again, it's just really like, where is your sprite? Okay, so now let's do something fun. Let's do when a certain key is hit, the ball will glide to one spot. And when another key is hit, the ball will go to another spot. And you can keep toggling that back and forth, and the ball will continue to move back and forth between those two spots. We need an event. It means when this happens, when an event happens, the ball will do this. So we're going to go in here, and we're going to get an event block. Okay, so we're going to drag this one out, which says when a certain key is pressed. So we're going to do when, and I like to do the right arrow. So we'll do the right arrow. And if you can find the right arrow, uh, if you're using a Mac laptop, it's to the bottom right. You'll see a set of four arrows, and the one pointed to the right is your right arrow. So let's connect this glide, and we're going to do right like that. So let's put our ball anywhere else. And I know you can't see this, but I am pressing the right arrow, and it's going. So why don't you give that a try and just play with that. Set it up, put your ball anywhere else, hit your right arrow key. It's pretty cool. Okay, now, we know what to do when it hits the right arrow key. What should we have it do when it hits the left arrow key? Well, I think we should make it move left. That seems pretty, pretty obvious, so we'll maybe set it right about there. Now, we know that where the position is right here, because it says it right here. Let's go back to our motions block, and we'll go down to glide one second, and as we've noticed, the X coordinate and the Y coordinates are already preloaded with the exact position that the ball is in right now. So that's kind of really helpful for us. So I'm going to drag this out into our scripts panel. I'm going to go back to the events palette because we need an event for this. An event is what has to happen for this glide to occur. Well, we need a key pressed. I'm going to snap on when key pressed. And we're going to do the left arrow key. So what we got going on? Well, when the right arrow key is going to go to this coordinate, which is really in the upper right of our stage, and in the left arrow is pressed, it's going to go to another set of coordinates, which is in the upper left side. Now, the fun begins. I'm going to take the ball and just randomly drop it somewhere down here, and I want you to do the same. Follow along with me. I'm going to hit the right arrow key. Boom! Went right up to where it's supposed to, where it's supposed to go. And now I'm going to hit the left arrow key. Boom! Went right, right where it was supposed to go. And now look at this. I'm going to hit right arrow, left arrow, right arrow, and left arrow. And I could do this all day long. It's never, ever, ever going to switch positions, um, which is really a lot of fun. This is going to help us in our next exercise, which is actually building a maze game. Play along with this. Play, play around with different coordinates. Maybe change this up or... You know, fill in some other numbers there. Let's see what happens with that. Let's see. Goes to slightly lower, but let's make it really obvious. Let's do 15. And that's going to, hang on one second. We're going to go back to this. Let's see. Okay, sorry. It was just a little delayed there. So I'm going to go back to the right. See, it goes down lower. So play around with those coordinates. I want you to get comfortable with the X and Y. Um, there's some handouts that go along with this tutorial that will help you just a little bit familiarize yourself with X and Y coordinates. So it might be helpful to have those sitting next to you as you work on your computer. Uh, see you in the next tutorial where we start building the game.